Yeah, it's great to be able to give you a bit of an update on this, because I feel like for a long time we were telling you we were developing it, we were trying to get it used, and it's been really good to see it finally in action and start to hear some of the stories coming back from that. So I'll share that with you. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. Yeah, so um, our main focus last year, really, in our children in emergencies work was redeveloping our COVID phone mentoring program to be adapted for use in a conflict setting and especially in Ukraine. Um, and we worked, one of the organisations we worked with was Innovista, who are a local organisation based here in Oxford, but who also have a lot of work and a lot of church partners in Ukraine. So it was a really good partnership. Um, and these are two of their um, staff in Ukraine who were working with us to get that resource into people's hands. And so that was them kind of celebrating when it had finally got finished and printed and they were about to start giving copies to people, which was really encouraging towards the end of last year. Um, and they've begun getting, so there's six sessions that people go through and after that they give some feedback and we've just started to get um, a few of those people finishing all the sessions um, and hear some stories from mentors. So this is one that Innovista actually shared on their social media, but we also met um, Tolik, the, their leader in Ukraine who came over to Oxford um, a couple of weeks ago. So we also got to hear this direct from him as well in talking to him. Um, so this is one story of a mentor called Victoria um, who worked in a preschool before the war. Um, and she talked to us about a family where the youngest child, a six-year-old girl, had been really affected by what had happened in the conflict. She had stopped speaking, she wasn't going to school and she wasn't eating, and the stress had really taken a toll on the whole family. Um, so Victoria was able to come alongside that family um, and go through the, the six sessions with the parent and the children and gradually talk about different things so that... Um, there could be just someone who's really listening and supporting the family through these things. Um, and she says, the Resilient Families Project had a profound effect on them as a family, enabled them to speak out and not keep secret what they had been carrying for almost a year. The session where we talked about mental health was very intense and the family discussed emotions and feelings. It was as if they got acquainted with these feelings for the first time. We talked about how all emotions are necessary and important to us and there are no bad or good ones. One of the great things about Resilient Families, the project, is that it gives resources to the parents who are struggling and close to burnout. The materials and support is vital for families and enables the parents to trust me and open up without fear of judgment. I would love to see more families have this opportunity. So it's just really encouraging to start to hear some of those stories and the, the deep impact something like that can have on families. Um, you may also remember that we developed a smartphone app to go alongside this as like something we wanted to try. And I think there have been people using the materials just without that. And some of them are using the app, but it's been great to see um, some of the results coming in through that. So that means that um, parents who are going through the program have the app on their phone. And as they go through sessions, they answer a few questions. They can see the resources and like check back for the things that they learn, so it's a resource for them too, but they also answer a few questions through the course or through the sessions, which give us some feedback directly from them, which is really good because we get to hear it really directly from them themselves. Um, so you won't be able to see this very clearly, but these I just thought I'd show you some of the stuff we've been finding out. Um, and it's interesting to see that it's really reaching people in all kinds of situations. So half of the people so far are people who are still where they are from in Ukraine, but also there's a big chunk of people who are living in a different country, so almost a quarter of them, and some quite a big lot of people who are displaced from their home but still within Ukraine. And it's great that people are using the materials in person, face to face, or over the phone, so it's really flexible so they can reach people in different locations. And it was also sad to see that quite a lot of almost almost half of the people are separated from some of their immediate family. So it feels really extra important that their mentors can provide this extra support to people. Uh, also, although a lot of these dots represent only one or two or three people, um, we were really surprised to see the reach that the program has had so far. Um, so we weren't aware that we'd be reaching people in Norway or Turkey or Hungary or Ireland or all of these places. So that's been also really good to see. Um, and we're hoping that, that will continue to, to grow. Um, also, there are some questions throughout which um, parents answer to talk about 
um, how they're feeling. And before they start, they talk about how confident they were both in supporting their child's emotional well-being and also having the skills to keep their child safe during conflict. And you can see that from the parents who finished so far, there's been a real um, shift in their capacity there that before it was almost there was a big chunk of people, almost half saying they weren't confident to support their children's well-being. And now the ones who have finished, they're all feeling confident in that. Um, and also a similar change in feeling confident to keep your child safe. So although this is um, a small number of people so far, it's a really encouraging trend. And so we're just really hoping to see more and more people get access to this and be able to use it. Um, I wanted to just also briefly give you an update of our children in emergencies work in general because um, this is one part of it and that was a really big focus but we also want to really think in this next season about how we can grow that beyond um, responding in different situations in a one-off way to something a bit more strategic um, and I'd love us to pray for that so we'd love to have a world where whenever anything happens anywhere around the world there's always a group of local churches equipped and ready to respond to that and be the best people to respond and there are people there in their region who are ready to facilitate that and help them to give a really high quality response. We'd love to see all Viva's partner networks with that capacity and able to respond well, building on what they've already learned from responding in COVID, as we saw with phone mentoring and all the other things they did then. And just ensuring that we're building really good quality resources to help that to happen. So I'd love you to pray for the Resilient Families Programme itself, that it would continue to impact the people who are going through it at the moment, and there'll be a way for it to really spread out a bit wider than where it is at the moment. Um, and then just for our children in emergencies work, for wisdom and how we can grow that so more people can be equipped to do that. Um, and also for our partner networks around the world to really build that expertise and be able to be people who can respond in those situations, because they're just increasing <laughs> currently so it will be great if all our partner networks are really well equipped in that thank you very much